So first of all, thank you, Minister, for an extremely inspiring uh, speech. And I'm so happy that I was invited to today's conference on a very important topic. As you may know, Sweden has long been a strong advocate for gender equality. Some of the most important reforms for promoting gender equality in Sweden were implemented already in the 1970s. My favorite examples is the individual income taxation, the development and expansion of the public childcare, and the gender neutral parental leave benefit. These were all crucial reforms since they gave women the opportunity to participate in the labor market to a greater extent. Gender equality starts at home. In, in my family, it starts in the kitchen. And still today, in Sweden and in the rest of EU, women do more of the domestic work in childcare. When I meet successful female entrepreneurs, I often ask them, what, what advice are you giving younger younger entrepreneurs, and all of them are answering, well, find yourself a feminist and equal partner, and then everything is solved. That's the most important thing. So today I'm here representing a feminist government where gender equality is a central priority. We have achieved equal representation in the government, just as you have in Lithuania. Gender mainstreaming is and has been the Swedish government's overarching strategy for implementing gender equality policies since 1994. It is an important strategy for reaching gender equality objectives. This approach is combined with measures designed to specifically target gender equalities in different policy areas. To support that work with gender mainstreaming, the Swedish Gender, gender Equality Agency was established in 2018. The Swedish government has commissioned the agency to support all the other agencies with the work of integrating these perspectives in their operations. We've come a long way, but still we have a lot of work to be done. Sweden is a highly innovative country, oftentimes ranked in the top of international service. But to stay on top, we have to make sure that competences from different areas and sectors connects and that everyone with a vision, regardless of sex or ethnicity, has the possibility to realize his or her business idea to the full potential. First of all, and perhaps needless to say, it makes sense economically to promote women as entrepreneurs since we represent half of the workforce. There is a strong link between gender equal companies and profitability, but also if we don't have female entrepreneurs starting their own companies and building them, we will miss out on many good business ideas that otherwise may not be developed. We have many examples, but I'm thinking, for example, of the Swedish startup called Grace Health. They use high-tech mobile technology to, develop, to, to deliver instant access to women's health, health services to women in emerging markets who has a mobile phone but lack access to women's health services and information. A successful company, but it would never have met the market without female entrepreneurs and female investors. Sweden, like many other countries, has worked to promote women's entrepreneurship over a long time. But we still need more women to picture themselves as entrepreneurs. Because even today, some people are quick to assume that teachers and nurses are women and that pilots, doctors and engineers are men. Magazines, televisions, and, and the internet, they are full of gender stereotypes that we all, not just as government, but as a society, we need to fight them. To be a successful entrepreneur, you'll have to be a risk taker. So picture yourself a risk taker. Is that a woman or a man? Fighting stereotypes is important. Another issue that is often raised when I met female entrepreneurs is the lack of access to venture capital. Statistics indicate that only one, one percent of the private venture capital money reaches female entrepreneurs. In the public VZ, it's 30 percent. 
Not good enough, but better. The main reason for this is that far fewer women start companies that need VC to grow. But we also see that it is harder for women to attract VC when the majority of venture capitalists are men. Changing those structures is difficult and it will take time. In Sweden, we are experiencing an increase in women entrepreneurship, but the increase is very slow. This development is not unique in Sweden. It's similar developments all found in all comparable countries. So work is still needed to eliminate the remaining obstacles to women's entrepreneurship. And we are, as a government, is fully committed to do that. However, one area that I would like to pinpoint <clears throat> where we, from a governmental point of view, can make a more direct impact is the portfolio of the state-owned enterprises. Our portfolio consists 41 fully owned and five partly owned enterprises with a total value of 70 billion euro, employing 130,000 people. Back in 2001, the Social Democratic government decided to increase the ambitions regarding gender equality in the boards of the state-owned enterprises. At that point, the portfolio consisted of 30% women board members and 13% of the chairmen were women. Much has happened since, and today we are proud to have a gender-balanced portfolio. 51% of the shares in the portfolio are women. And on the Stockholm Stock Exchange, that figure is 8.6%. And in our portfolio, 47% of the board members are women, 49% of the CEOs, and 44% in the management teams. So what can we all learn from this successful work to promote more gender equality. Well, I'd like to conclude with three things that we can learn from the work that we've done with the state-owned enterprises. First of all, tone at the top. Gender equality is not something that can start from the bottom and grow upwards. A clear commitment from the, from the owner or from the board of directors or from the government is needed. Next is resources. You'll have to put money and people behind your commitment. Words are not enough. And the third is goals, and preferably goals that are communicated publicly. What is measured gets done. So as a conclusion, I wish you a fantastic afternoon. I wish I could spend the whole day together with you. But the most important from us as a feminist government is that gender equality, it's not a woman's issue. It's a question of survival and competitiveness for modern societies. Thank you.